London, 1675. The Puritan government of Oliver Cromwell has collapsed. Fifteen years earlier, the exiled Charles Stuart had been restored to the throne as King Charles II. We are in that period known as the Restoration. <laughs> The theatre, like the king, had returned to its place at the centre of English society, and with a vengeance. But it catered almost exclusively for the gentry. The theatre was an expensive place to visit. Well, what yourself with that visit meantime? <laughs> Some poor, I warrant you. Or a chambermaid dressed in her latest old clothes. <laughs> the audience went as much to be seen as to see. The theatre was a place to meet and talk, and taking its cue from the king, a place, frankly, to chat up members of the opposite sex. <laughs> After a period of repression, the new reign was a signal for exuberance, energy, and unaccustomed freedom. <laughs> the best seats in this sort of theatre were on the stage itself. Who have we here? Pinchwife! <laughs> The actors had a hard time of it, and often the stage manager had to intervene. Oh, the audience was exclusive, apart from the halls and orange girls. Out of the entire population of London, only a couple of thousand people ever went to the theatre, where the drama on stage and the drama in the auditorium were often interchangeable, the one reflecting the other. In the intervals, the grandees paraded their finery on stage. <laughs> and indeed, the play often had to take second place to what was happening elsewhere in the theatre. Anything out of fashionable London was derided and mocked, usually by the town wits. Their repartee was very much part of the style of these... But how modesty! Homely, wholesome, housewifely, that's all. But, Privy, was not the way you were in better? Is not keeping better than marriage? Pox off, the jades would jupe me. I could never keep a whore to myself. So then, you only married to keep a whore to yourself. <laughs> Women are like soldiers, made constant by good pay, not by oaths and covenants. Therefore, I advise my friends to keep rather than marry, since, too, I find by your example it does not serve one's turn. For I saw you yesterday at the theatre in the 18-penny place with a pretty country wench. Oh. <laughs> Devil, did he see my wife there? I sat there that she might not be seen. I warrant was his wife which he seated there out of sight, for he's a cunning rogue and understands the town. Hell and damnation, I am undone. Was it thy wife? She was exceeding pretty. I was in love with her at that distance. You are like never to be nearer to her, your servant. Nay, no, shall not go. I must. I have business of hope to beat his wife. He's jealous of her. <laughs> Tis hard to find an old whore master without jealousy. <laughs> As well as wit, restoration comedies always told a good, strong story. Here, Pinchwife's knowing sister chaperones the young bride, Marjorie, the country wife of the title. He says he will not let me go abroad for fear of catching the pox. Fie! The smallpox, you should say. <laughs> <laughs> but here comes your husband. 
I keep no company with any women of scandalous reputation. No, you keep the men of scandalous reputations company. <laughs> <laughs> Would you not have me civil? Answer them in a box at the place, in a drawing room at Whitehall, in St. James's Park, Mulberry Garden. Hopeful. <laughs> do not teach my wife where the men are to be found. I bid you keep her in ignorance as I do. <laughs> but she will tell me nothing of the town, though I ask her a thousand times a day. Oh, are you not talking of plays and players when I came in? You are her encourager in such discourses. Nay, no, Bud, she chid me just now for liking the player man. Nay, if she be so innocent as to own to me her liking them, there is no hurt in it. My dear, you must love me only. And not be like the naughty town women who only hate their husbands and love every man else. <laughs> love plays, visits, fine coaches, fine clothes, <laughs> fiddles, <laughs> boars, <laughs> treats, <laughs> and so lead a wicked town life. Nay, but if to enjoy all these things be a town life, London is not so bad a place, dear. How? If you love me, you must hate London. The fool forbid me discovering to her the pleasures of the town, and now he's setting her a gog upon them himself. Oh, pray, bud, let's go to a play tonight. Please, I won't. Why, love? First, you like the actors, and the gallants may like you. What? A homely country girl? No bud. Nobody will like me. I'll tell you then that one of the lewdest fellows in town who saw you there told me he was in love with you. <laughs> Having been enticed, Marjorie puts pressure on her husband. Pray, bud, let's go to a play tonight. Faith, not that I care one pin for what they say there, but I love to look on the player man. I would see if I could the galant you say loves me. That's all, dear Bud. <laughs> that's all, dear Bud. Come, let's go abroad before it is too late, for I will go, that's flat and plain. So, the obstinacy already of a town wife. And I must, while she's here, humour her like one. Oh. Oh. Sister, how shall we do that she may not be seen or know? Let her put on a mask. <laughs> a mask makes people more inquisitive, and her... Her shape, stature, habit will be known. And if we should meet Horner, he will be sure to take acquaintance with us. Must wish her joy. Talk to her, kiss her, leer upon her. And the devil and all. Nay, shall we go? For the exchange will be shut, and I've a mind to see that. I have it. I'll dress her up in the suit we are to carry down to her brother. Nay, I know the town tricks. Come, we'll go dress her. Oh. 